Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another week of Magic with Amiibo. This week we are focusing back on Standard because it's the only format not touched by the recent B&R announcement. So on Monday, we're going to see some bands in Historic, Modern, Pioneer, uh, Pauper. So um, we will see what that looks like. I'm planning on having a video up on Monday to discuss those changes, but for now, for Magic With Mebo, I wanted to focus on a format that's not gonna change. So, here we are, <laughs> standard. This is one of my favorite decks, John Sacrifice. As you'll start to uh, learn about me, I really like John. So, this is kind of a deck that's been in standard for a while, popul popularized by Canister at MC7. Obviously some new M21 cards here, but the crux of the deck is we're looking at Haldron Familiar and we're looking at Witch's Oven. That in itself is kind of the combo, and the rest of the deck synergizes around that. So we see other cards like Mayhem Devil works really well when you're sacrificing cards. Uh, Corvold also works really well when you're sacrificing cards. The rest of the deck, um, like the, the like new changes, is Bolus is Citadel because in a lot of matches in standard right now, specifically looking at Team Iraq and the new versions of Bant. You can't really always grind out your opponents. Um, uh, that's always been the case with Team Iraq, but because Bant has win now buttons like Ugin, you can't really afford to do that. So you really just want to kind of get things going and uh, well, this is Citadel and Mayhem Devil's kind of a combo. Other cards, um, we have Claim the Firstborn to interact with more creature decks. Um, we have Scavenging Ooze, best reprint. This makes me so happy. I think this card should always be in standard. This card is phenomenal and it deals with Uro. Yes. Uh, Priest is really good. Just synergizing with the deck as well. I don't know if I mentioned that with the other cards already or not. Trail of Crumbs. Same thing. You can do a lot of like cute little tricks with this deck, hopefully in our match today. Uh, there's a couple that come up, so we can kind of walk through that and show you. Llanowar Visionary is a new card in M21, and this card's kind of been overshadowed by a lot of the more powerful cards we have in Standard so far, like Uro <laughs> just kind of like does this better. But I, th I think this card is really strong. It's a good three drop in this deck. Unfortunately, it produces green mana, which doesn't really work that well with Bolas' Citadel, but I still think it's a very solid card. Uh, Woe Shrider, uh, just another one that synergizes really well in the deck. Lots of sacrificing, um, lots of cute tricks you can do with Cauldron Familiar and other cards. Uh, I could and have written a whole article about <laughs> Jun Sacrifice in the past, so there's just, there's not enough to go into in like a 15 minute video, but uh, hopefully getting into the actual match of magic, we'll kind of see some stuff come together. Looking at the sideboard, I kind of took a handful of different sideboarding ideas from a bunch of different people. Um, I think Red Cat Melee is just kind of really good against the aggressive decks. We see a rise in Gruel for some reason in Standard. Um, very popular deck in Historic, but people have started playing in Standard too. Uh, and of course, Red Deck wins is always, there's always people trying to throw an Ember Cleave on something. So we have Red Cat Melee, Agonizing Remorse, deals with Uro some more, interacts with uh, those like ramp and mid range decks, looks at their hand. Blight Beetle is an interesting one. Um, so that, to, to me, the initial impression of this, like, reacts well to, uh, people playing Hydroid Crisis. Hydroid Crisis has seen just an incredible spike in popularity. Uh, Mirror, Rexac, Scavenging News, just, again, a great card, and then, uh, more of Corvold and Bulls is Citadel for those kind of grindier matches. I'm going to shut up now, and we're going to play some Magic. Here we go, starting up the match. Let's see what our hand looks like. Um, this is typically a hand that I'm inclined to keep. You really want a mix of, you probably want a one drop, can settle for a two drop. I like having part of the uh, cat oven combo in the opening hand. And um, sand's like a little land heavy, but we do have um, Solemn Simulacrum, otherwise known as Sad Robot, to, uh, to kind of get things moving. So I'm gonna keep this. 
also lucky for all of you, uh, I'm going to actually be a good person and start putting deck lists in the description so you can just download it. <laughs> that is uh, something I missed out on in the previous videos and I apologize. Scavenging ooze. Definitely want to get down this priest. And I think I actually don't want to play the oven because next turn we can play sad robot and activate priest to play the oven. So I think we'll leave it at that and just pass turn because scavenging is kind of a problem against this deck. Not gonna lie. A little bit of a problem. All right, so it looks like we're just playing against Bant Midrange. Um, Teferi, honestly, not the best card against us, but um, fortunately, we do not have a Sacrifice Source, so, like, a little punished for the play we made. But I think it's okay. We can just kind of set up what we were going to do next turn anyway. So, replay the Priest, hold up the Oven. Now we actually have a Sacrifice Source. And we could actually play Corvold next turn. Um, not sure we want to, though, because I do want to be able to deal with the scavenging news. And I don't want to have to sacrifice my Corvold. I know it's covering up, but we have a we do have a Witch's Oven down here. Hmm. That is interesting. So, like, we could play the Mayhem Devil. I think, though, I, I think I still want to play the Sad Robot. All right, sweet. We get to set up for a couple turns now. Um, let's see. Actually, we can attempt to uh, play Mayhem Devil right now, right? So let's make a red mana here. Sacrifice both of these. Hopefully this is fine and just gets rid of their scavenging news. We get two black mana and then we can attempt to play Mayhem Devil. Okay, they're exiling our Gilded Goose. And our Sad Robot. That's fine. It also makes me think that this uh, Mayhem Devil is actually going to resolve because they're tapping out. And it is excellent. So we'll draw a card from there. Ooh! I still want to get the Mayhem Devil down while we can. God, we have so <laughs> we have so many options next turn. Trust me, I have a plan. I think how I like to approach Bant at least. Um, game one, we can, uh, play Orvold and Cat, start getting some card advantage. Ooh, them not doing anything is super good for us. So, Bolus of Citadel has the potential to combo off, but I don't think I want to do that yet. Because if we get the rest of our things in play, that sets up really well to actually combo kill them next turn with Bolus's Citadel. They're having a big think. Big think up here. 
Alright, shattering. Oh, that's not what I want to do. I want to look over here. It's at three. That's pretty annoying, actually. Hmm. We will sacrifice this and deal a damage to Teferi. Alright. So, Cat comes in. Let's uh, shock and play Corvold. And let's sacrifice the Kitty Cat. The draw card. Alright. So, definitely not what we wanted to have happen, but I think we're still in an okay Don't position. Yeah. So that's hitting Corvold. We do get to draw another card. Okay. We can we can see what happens with Bolas' Citadel this turn. Have some fun. They are uh, completely tapped out, so let's go ahead and do that. Scoos, Devil's a good start. Goose, Trail of Crumbs, Visionary. Oh no, a devil was on top! Oh, that was just gonna be game. Actually, this already is game. <laughs> yeah, so what? We uh, then activate Bolus' Citadel, sacrificing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're dealing uh, 10 damage to them, and now we have all of these Mayhem Devil triggers that are going right towards the face. I'm gonna make me click through all of them. Okay. All right, very good. Yeah, so like, as you can see against Bant, we really like um, a lot of these kind of bigger card advantage engines, like Scavenging Ooze. What else, yeah. We didn't like, Oh, I guess they do have scavenging news. Okay, we can throw in a blight beetle or two. Um, can take out some of these like filler creatures in the post board games. Let's take out a trail of crumbs. Trail of crumbs is really good, but we're like <sighs> trying to just. Streamline the deck into Bullis' Citadel, I think so. I can leave one claim the Firstborn? That's really rough. We haven't really seen enough of their creature package to uh, sideboard efficiently to my likes, but this is what we'll try based on what we've seen. Oh, this is such a tempting hand. Oh. We're on the draw, too. I think I'm going to be disciplined and mulligan this. I want to keep this so bad, but um, if this was like a basic swamp, I might be more inclined to take it. Otherwise, I think I'm going to take a mulligan here. Mm. Yeah, that, that's not very good either. Let's go. Alright, this five is really good. So let's put it back. Corvold, because we're not casting that in forever. And... Dang, the rest of the cards are really good, but let's let's put back a scavenger news. I don't know if that's right. I'm gonna grab a swamp. We could like wait till their end step to do this, but I don't really want to click through their whole turn. Oof. 
That's a really good one against uh, our priest. This does tell me that they're probably gonna play on their turn though. <sighs> yeah, well. Rough mall two five. Definitely not out of it yet, though. They only have four cards in hand, so we will see how this goes. Please don't remove any of my cards. That looks like a devout decree, yeah. Opponent, why are you doing this to me? Okay, we can just block one damage. Uh, not looking too hot right now. Let's try this. All right, the menace of standard Uro. That is uh, definitely one that's harder for us to deal with. It does sacrifice, so we do get to uh, deal with damage to fairy, getting closer to dealing with that problem. Alright. I'm going to shock here so we have the option to sacrifice this food if we really need a mayhem double trigger. Unfortunately, cannot attack through all these cats. Opponent knows we're making a YouTube video, so they're taking their grand old time and making Matt cut out a lot of dead space in between turns. Sorry, Matthew. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. At this point, we're, like, not even mad if they shatter the sky. Like, their board state is so much better than ours anyway. Alright, this just, like, feels indicative that they are going to shatter the sky. Oh, no. This, they, yep. Yeah. Always forget that that's a thing. Turn into three threes. So, uh, those still trade, and I think I'm fine with that. So, let's get her one trigger off of that. Another move. We're left with two twos. Still, uh, all right, yeah. Uh, we can move to game three and try not to mulligan to five. Let's go. A um, little more information about what they have going on, which I think makes me want these back in and claim. Don't think we need Blight Beetle anymore. That's more for like the Hydroid Crisis build. Let's just let's keep two Corvold. We want to go really hard on the Bolus's Citadel. I think we get to play first. We get to Mulligan. Oh yes, yes, we get a good hand. Oh, this hand's great. Um, fortunately, I have to put something back, and I think it's Scavenging News, which sucks a lot because Scavenging News is wonderful. But I mean, this is the combo, and Priest is. Just like an absurdly powerful card. Obviously, we need another creature to make it worth it, but I'm happy. I I'm very happy with this hand. Since we're on the play and they don't have a one-drop removal in their deck, I am... No, actually, because we want to play Priest next turn no matter what, so yeah, we're actually going to play Witch's Oven. 
I was going to say, I normally play Witch's Oven first just so there's um, a sacrifice source online. We need protection for our creatures. And I was going to say this time we should play Cauldron Familiar because we're on the play and they don't have a one-drop removal spell. But we really want to play Priest. Yeah, so, oh, this next turn is going to be so good if they don't mess with my Priest. Oh, that's so perfect. Yes. Sweet. Alright. So let's uh, do one of these and one of these. And we're definitely getting rid of Joel Reel. Sacrificing these. Maybe we get an untapped green source. That'd be great. We can play Llanowar Visionary. Oh. I just like write this stuff perfectly, huh? Alright, Wolf Strider's a really good card, too. If they try and target any of these, we can just sacrifice it, and then we have the Cat Oven combo going on. Alright, there's Gross Pilot. I was gonna say, in this matchup, I am actually a really big fan of turning off their Teferi draw a card by, uh... Like, if they target- if they were to play Teferi here and target Priest, I would... Probably sacrifice it to turn off the draw card. Like, shutting off their card advantage is why we play Jund, pretty much, compared to, say, Rakdos Sacrifice. Alright, alright. Don't necessarily want to use Priest here. So, play tapped. We will still hold up Priest, though, as a second... Or, I guess, third sacrifice source. Especially if they're uh, planning to shatter the sky here. Yeah, so they're shattering. How do we want to play this? We want to activate Priest. We can get rid of these two. Alright, that's not too great. Um, we can also scry. Don't want another land. And then uh, get the cat oven combo on. So they're already at 10. We can bring back Woe Strider next turn. Alright, they, they don't have a one drop removal, so I am going to bring back cat this time to just get extra damage in. We're like almost across the finish line, so I really just want to get there. Grab a swamp. We'll swing for one. And play this Wolf Strider. Not really a fan of getting rid of cat, but like we have another cat in our hand. We have the one in play. It's fine. Okay, that's a relatively <laughs> hard thing for uh, Rakdos Sacrifice to deal with. Uh, a little easier for us, but still a little spooky. Yeah, that sucks. Targeting Woe Strider. Do we want them to draw a card? They're tapped out. They already activated Nissa. That's... <clears throat> Uh, let's scry. On bottom. I think we'll actually let this go. It's like a little unfortunate. But, alright. Their life total is open, so we want to bring it back. If they had left uh, the Hollow Fountain as blockers, I would have not brought the Cauldron Familiar back in case we draw a Mayhem Devil. Bring this back. Get another cat. Meow. 
We are not, um, I mean, we could play the Fabled Passage, but we're not going to crack the Fabled Passage in case we do draw a Mayhem Devil. It's really important for the most part to hold Fabled Passages uh, while playing Jun Sacrifice because they're much more valuable as a kind of like Mayhem Devil fodder than just uh, thinning your deck, but I I'm not going to go into the actual statistics of deck thinning, but... I'm sure you can find some content on that somewhere. <clears throat> Here we go. And we have uh, EC Elspeth Conquers up now, just another shatter. All right, um, we'll take a couple scries then. Probably just hoping to hit, ding ding, ma'am devil, sweet. All right, so um, I mean, I guess we sacrifice one of these. Now I'm definitely leaving the uh, cauldron familiars in graveyard because they're going to animate Anissa. Um, the one damage isn't going to get through, so we want to hold that one damage for casting the Mayhem Devil. I mean, if they don't animate an Issa land, like... Woohoo! Alright, that one's rough. Need to gain some life back. Oh, and they have enough to escape it. Alright, rough stuff. This is still very much a game. I thought it was over because we had the Mam Devil. It is very much not over. The land fights for us. All right, we can take three. Oh, they go up so they go up to so much life now. Here's the Mayhem Devil. Do think we have to uh, take nine damage from a land? Maybe we just have to take twelve. We can actually like start killing lands, right? Like, do this, hit a land. This comes in and drains. We can block a land. Sacrifice. Hit the hollowed fountain. And we're gonna leave the cat in the graveyard for now, but since we do have a fable passage, we can do that as our last point of damage. And just take six here. Claim the first one would be very good right now. <sighs> That's uh, unfortunate. We cannot even uh, escape this. Hmm. All right, I think they stabilize, and I think we're going to lose this game, um, unless we draw something really good. I suppose we technically have to uh, keep this Nissa from ultimating. Talk of peace. All right, go ahead. 
Oh, we're so silly. We should have blocked the Uro with the Cauldron Familiar. I was so focused on the lands. Oh, that's silly. Alright, Bounce Mayhem Devil to draw a card. That's rough. Ah, oh, jeez. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Can we get one of our four, uh... One of our four Bolus of Citadels off the top? I don't even know how good that is. We're at such a low life total. Let me take game actions. Alright, oh block. Like unfortunately I have to let this just get eaten by Scoos. Oh, I yeah. Okay. Hurry up! Okay, yeah, we are uh, dead with that one. Uh, as you can see, the deck is um, definitely hoping for uh, Bolus's Citadel or Corvold in this Bant matchup, which is why <laughs> in the whole 75 we're playing four of each. Um, and we unfortunately did not see it that game three. We had a rough uh, game two mulligan, but overall, I think the deck's really solid. This is probably my first choice of deck um, in standard right now. I'm gonna start a new series. Um, don't know what to name it yet, but something of like decks of the week where I look at standard and historic decks that are, I think are the best decks each week to ladder with. And so that's gonna be really exciting this coming up week with the uh, bands. And I'm excited to just have a video um, about the bands and reactions in general. So be sure to like and subscribe to watch those as well. Um, be notified when those go up. I'm super excited for uh, all this content to put out on YouTube. Thank you all for watching. I already said like and subscribe, so go ahead and do that. I'll have the deck list in the description. If you want to watch me live stream every day, every weekday, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash mythic underscore Mebo. I'm also super online on Twitter, so find me at mythic Mebo. And we'll see you next week for another episode of Magic with Mebo. See y'all.